Greetings, we'll cover a few details about, William C. Durant and his life in a succinct manner. Here is a short rundown of his early years, education, career, persona, notable works, accolades, and demise. Known as, William Crapo Durant, famous as, co-founder of the General Motors and Chevrolet, born, December 8, 1861, Boston, Massachusetts, United States, died, March 18, 1947, New York, New York, United States. Father, William Clark Durant. Mother, Rebecca Falger Crapo. Spouse, Catherine Letterer. Children, Marjorie Durant, Cliff Durant. Place of Death, New York, United States. William Clark Durant and Rebecca Falger Crapo welcomed a son, William Crapo Durant, on December 9, 1861 in Boston. Henry H. Crapo, the governor of Michigan, was the mother of the boy. When Durant's parents separated, he was still pretty little. By then, his father had declared bankruptcy. So Durant and his mother relocated to Flint, Michigan. Following the establishment of his father's successful lumber business, his parents reconciled. In addition, his father held the offices of governor of Michigan and mayor of Flint. Durant left high school to work for his grandfather's business, the Crapo Lumber Company, after dropping out. At the same time, he also got several additional employment. He was a salesman for a local cigar factory, for instance. In 1885, Durant entered the automobile industry after discovering a suspension mechanism that lessened bounce when driving. The Flint Road Cart Company was founded by him and Michigan-based auto manufacturer, Josiah Dallas Dort the following year. By 1890, it had changed its name to the Durant Dort Carriage Company, and was a well-known producer of horses-drawn carriages. It finally became the biggest manufacturer of this type in the U.S., by the turn of the 20th century. Durant became concerned about the government's inability to effectively regulate gasoline-powered horseless carriages at the start of the 20th century. He made the decision to introduce a modified and safer range of transportation on his own, rather than waiting for the government to act to change the situation. The industrial shift from the horse-drawn carriage to the vehicle also began at this time. Interestingly, Durant loathed vehicles at first, but he saw the possibility in the circumstance. Durant first set out to acquire the nearby automaker Buick Motor Company, which was on the edge of bankruptcy, in order to launch this enormous undertaking. He took over the company's management in 1904, and with the use of materials from Durant Dort, he revitalized Buick. As a result of Durant's leadership, Buick outperformed the main automobile manufacturers Ford, Cadillac, and Oldsmobile within four years to rank among the top four. Durant persuaded Buick to take part in the 1905 Automobile Show in New York, with the intention of turning his company into a significant business that produced a range of autos and parts. There, he received orders totaling more than 25 times as many automobiles as the business had ever produced. Production at Buick had increased dramatically by 1907. Durant wished to grow the company. He envisioned producing various models at various price points to cater to customers with various wants and means, unlike his rival, Ford, which at the time only produced the Model T. He considered acquiring automakers of various parts and firms to help him reach his objective. In 1909, he tried to purchase Ford, but his endeavor was unsuccessful because Henry Ford insisted on payment in cash. On September 16, 1908, Durant established an escrow account and used it to form the General Motors Holding Company with Canadian industrialist Robert Samuel McLaughlin founder of the McLaughlin Motor Car Company. In order to create the International Motor Car Company, Durant and Benjamin Briscoe of Maxwell Briscoe intended to combine the top four automakers, Buick, Olds Motor Vehicle Company, Maxwell Briscoe, and Ford. Later, Ford and Olds backed down. Eventually, Briscoe too changed his mind. 
The New Jersey holding firm started to add a number of more automakers, including Cadillac, Oldsmobile, Oakland, Pontiac, Carter Car, and Elmore, as well as a number of suppliers of replacement components, including Dayton Engineering Laboratories, Delco Electronics Corporation. Sadly, despite being a fantastic salesman, Durant's poor spending choices put him in debt. Most of his purchases were impulsive and expensive. Durant lost control of General Motors GM, in 1910, when the company was drowning in debt. This did not, however, weaken his resolve. He was somewhat helped by the fact that some of his buddies made investments in the business. However, Louis Chevrolet, an automobile engineer, provided the most significant assistance when he appointed Durant a partner in the newly founded Chevrolet Motor Company in 1911. The business achieved immediate success. He sold his stock in the Durant Dort Carriage Company in 1914. Durant sold a significant portion of his Chevrolet stock, increasing his ownership in GM. In 1915, the Chevrolet Motor Company bought GM, renamed it the General Motors Corporation, and appointing Pierre Dupont as CEO. In 1916, Durant was elected as its leader. In 1918, McLaughlin was named the company's director and vice president. With the support of the DuPont family, Durant reclaimed total command of GM. During that brief amount of time in charge, GM expanded and purchased the Chevrolet product line. Durant simultaneously founded a number of other businesses, including Republic Motors, to build Chevrolet cars. United Motors, which Durant had founded by bringing together a number of component and part manufacturers, was acquired by GM in 1918. The next year, GM grew to be one of the biggest American industrial conglomerates, and Durant became well-known on Wall Street. Durant wanted GM to transition from being a car company to a producer of electronic goods. His plan to produce refrigerators was a huge success. His lackluster administrative and planning abilities, however, negatively harmed the reputation of such a huge business. Additionally, he made irresponsible purchases once more, as a result of his poor purchasing judgments. He joined the Rockefeller family and other financial powerhouses to purchase a sizable number of shares with the primary goal of driving up the price of GM equities on the market. He also had a heated argument with Henry Leland, the founder of Cadillac. Durant prevented GM from contributing to any defense work because he opposed the United States' involvement in World War I. With this, the business missed a fantastic chance to turn a profit. Patriotic Leland left GM to found the Lincoln Motor Company to aid the country in the war. His overinvestment in the stock market by the time the Panic of 1920 hit is thought to have caused the largest financial loss in stock market history. Once more, Durant was losing control of GM. In 1885, Durant wed Clara Miller Pitt for the first time. Marjorie, the daughter of the couple, went on to write a book about her father. Russell Clifford Durant, one of their other children, went on to become a racing car driver. They split up in 1900. In 1908, Jackson's Catherine Letterer became Durant's wife. His memory gradually became impaired, and his speech became slurred, as a result of his declining health and stroke-related issues. He was unable to go back to Flinch, because of his failing health. They auctioned up all of their meager assets, to cover his medical costs. After a few days in a coma, Durant passed away on March 18, 1947, and was interred at the Bronx's Woodlawn Cemetery.